Welcome to Finstown Castle Hotel in Luton County, Dublin, where today we're going to interview some of the most successful drivers in the 2022 Boss Ireland Championship. And Boss, for those who might not know, uh, the reason we call it Boss is big, open, single-seaters. And the cars we cater for are single-seaters with wings and slicks and open sports cars. Now we have two classes. Boss 1 is for bigger engine cars. Basically, Boss 1 is over 2 litre capacity, engine capacity, and Boss 2 for under 2 litre engine capacity, which really caters for Formula 3, maybe Formula Renault, and uh, some are lesser engine cars. Now, um, I'd like to thank our sponsors. Without the sponsors, we wouldn't be able to run the series we do in the way we run it. And uh, our, we have a title sponsor. Two people are, are uh, sponsoring the series. And one is Finstown Castle Hotel, where we are today, and Gaswise Limited from County Loud. And we also have some uh, other companies who are sponsoring us, are giving us some financial support. Dan Daly Engines in County Mead, Krakora Mills in County Limerick, First Class Fireplaces in County Mead, Dalco Engineering Systems in County Mead also, and Stone Motorsport in County Kildare. And the three people that we have here, the three drivers, are on my right, we have Tom Gochran in the middle, Tony Greenan, and on the far right, Aaron Gochran. So without further ado, I'll hit Tom with the first question. Tom, tell us a bit about yourself and how you got into motorsport. Oh, uh, good question. Um, got into motorsport many years ago in the UK, mainly starting with track days and uh, stayed with that. Uh, done a lot of track days in Ireland and Mondello, then started doing sprinting, done a lot of sprints in the UK. Got a good bit of success in sprinting in various categories and then took the jump to actually going racing. Yeah, yeah what, what, got you, what got you into motorsport first? I mean, was there motorsport in the family? No, no, it was just love of cars, speed, uh, the thrill, exhilaration, you know, um, that sort of buzz. Okay. Yeah, you know. Tony, what about you? Uh, where did you start or where, what got you into the motorsport? Um, and my, tell us a bit about yourself as well because our viewers might not know, you know, how famous you are. <laughs> not famous at all. <laughs> um, the first bit of motorsport I ever did was uh, BF Super Sunday Series, which was run at Bishop's Court and Knott's Corner. Um, I think I was about 20 years of age then, which is about 23 years ago. Um, I actually won that championship and I remember getting, I think, winning, I think it was a thousand pound at the time. And uh, that gave me the money to go to Australia. So it did okay. for the year, yeah. So that was run by uh, a man called Billy Finnegan, who's still mighty proud of that series that, that, that he run all them years ago. Very good, very yeah. good. And from there, uh, I think it was like track days really for about 10, 10 years or so before I bought the Radical and jumped into uh, the Formula Boss. Yeah, and did you did you do your own work on the cars there in the early days or? Not really, no. Yeah, no. you always, well, had somebody always had somebody to do the work. I'm just useless on the spanners, to be honest. That's very good. Yeah, well, it's not, well, it's good for you. <laughs> good for you if you can afford to do it that way. Well, now, Aaron, what about yourself? Yeah, I know you have a motorsport fan yeah, here beside you. Yeah, in fact, would you, would you introduce this man beside you? Because people might know that you're related. Yeah, no, the man on my far left, to be fair, oh. is Tom. That's me dad. Um, so that's I'm obviously who, who got me into motorsport <laughs> in, to begin with. But no, to be fair, I'm a plumber, so I am at the minute. Uh, I got into motorsport, obviously, through family. And my dad's always been into cars and bringing me to track days as a kid. Um, so yeah, no, that's where it all really began. Uh, I started really when I was probably 12, 13, arrived at a track, 
and we turned around and just made out I'd lost my license and forgot it and somehow we managed to swindle away that they signed me on and put me on track as a driver it's very good I was probably 13 coming out of pit lane with him beside me screaming at me gear brake torn so it was brilliant that that was like my first real I fell in love with motorsport from then so ever since then we've done track days together me and me dad it's always been something for us to do together and I enjoy it the two of us enjoy it and then probably 2016, my dad started sprinting in the UK, which was interesting because it brought us from just track day and together and having fun together and to going off and actually competing. So that was interesting mm. as we started going there. We'd be very similar to Tony in the sense we wouldn't be amazing on spanners. Um, but we ran in the UK in a sprint championship and did most of the stuff ourselves over there. It's only since we've come from sprinting to racing that really we've got involved with a team and had a team dynamic around us pushing us. So, yeah, that's okay. how I got into motorsport. All right. All right, Tony. Question two for you is how, how did you or why did you come to Boss? The um, series that we were running today. I think I had a video, I posted a video on my Facebook page of the Radical doing a pretty quick time at a track day um, at Kirkus, I think it was like 54 seconds and I remember uh, Boy Rabbit actually commented on the post, he said, so you're coming racing with us. Yeah. And, and then yeah. I started looking at times and stuff like that and, and I said, you know what, I'll actually, I'll take a go with this. Okay. And I just jumped straight in. With and it. you're here since? Yeah, here ever since, yeah. Yeah. So you're here, what, two years? Three years? Two, it? two years now, I think, yeah. Is it? Two, okay. Two, two years, yeah. Very good. Yeah. What about Aaron? Was it a father and son joint effort, or why did you, why did you, why, why did you happen why to be Why did we boss? end up in Boss? We sprinted in the UK in a Clio, and to be fair, that was brilliant. We did a few years with that, and then we sold it, and we wanted to try to do something else sprinting-wise again. So we, we went on the hunt for a car. Well, we found a car in Limerick for sale off Paul. Oh, yeah. And that's how we actually met Paul O'Connell. We were at a sprint in Anglesey, and we were chatting to another lad about a Norma for sale. And it's a funny story how it ended up happening. But we ended up on the phone to Paul, or Tom ended up on the phone to Paul, and down in Paul's, we viewed the car. And this is how we basically met Paul and became aware of really racing in Ireland and what really went on. Because I suppose with me dad being from the UK, we did a lot of track days in the UK. And when we sprinted, we started in the UK. So we didn't really know what really went on over here. So Paul kind of dragged us down and said, we bought the Norma and sprinted it in the UK for two years and chatting to Paul, he was trying to get us into Boss and get me dad across. So eventually me dad sold the Norma and bought the Radical and joined Boss. So I watched Boss for a season helping me dad and um, the plan was always really to do a season with Boss and if it was successful then we'd try to buy something for me to drive and come across with him. So that's how the two of us ended up in Boss really. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's a small so you, world. You, I suppose there's no point in asking Tom the same question no, because no, yeah, you know, no, that's, I think uh, Aaron's covered it well. In fairness, yeah, he did do it very well actually. Yeah, yeah. And you know, you mentioned Paul O'Connell there. Yeah. Paul, of course, is a great ambassador for the sport. Absolutely. Because he he gets people, he rings people, he, he yeah. tries to get them involved, and. You know, he's, he's brought a lot of people into the yeah. sport. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And of course, he's gone through but a lot of cars. I would be strong in saying that if we hadn't have bought the Norma originally mm -hmm. to sprint with, we would have never probably raced in Ireland. No, because yeah. I don't think we were our, our eyes or we hadn't experienced it to know what was available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, seeing as, seeing as Aaron is in the talkative mood, we'll ask him now, what about your the car you currently drive? Yeah, at the minute I drive a Formula 3 car, it's a 2012 chassis, running 2017 Aero, it's a 2.0-litre Toyota engine. Um, oh, I love it, it's a savage little bus to be fair, very direct, um, not that, not crazy power, it only runs 250 horsepower, so there are times <coughs> you'll sit there and you'll think, oh, I wish I had a tow rope to throw at him, or I wish yeah. I had something yeah. to give me a bit more boost, but um, no, through the corners, they're just amazing, like, they're mind-blowing, it's very hard to wrap your head around how fast and how late you can break, and corner speed you can carry in Formula 3 cars, but um, yeah, I love it, to be fair, it's been, it's been great to drive, in fairness, I only drove the Radical once, I enjoyed when I drove my dad's Radical, but it was insane, the power I had, the delivery, very different to what I was used to in the F3s. Um, so to be fair, yeah, I, I liked F3s. I had an 07, the jump from an 07 F3 to the 2012 F3 was mind blowing. You, you wouldn't believe they were both Formula 3 cars. 
Christmas. Yeah, and the older the older car was actually a quick car in its day as well. Yeah, the yeah. older car, and to be fair, it pumped in good times around Mondello, but it, it, night and day the difference between the newer spec, in my opinion. And uh, to be fair, even the first season I raced with Boss, I ended up running a 307, a 312, and a 309. I drove that year as well, and. It, the difference between all three, like it was mad to see how, with a m- bit more modern technology in it, the the newer one was much easier to drive. And did you have to put much into that car now during the year, during your um, race year? The, the car we have this year, we bought it off Fergus. Fergus ran it last year, and to be fair, the car has had it's been spanner checked every round and it's meticulously looked after. But it's never been mapped. It's never been on a rolling road. You know, uh, they're, they're and spare, what about spare parts for? Did spare you need parts, spares, um, spares during the year? Through the year, we've changed a set of brake discs and a set of brake pads. When we bought the car off Fergus, there was a few small little cracks across the discs, so we knew to watch them through the year. So no, 50% way through the year, we changed the discs and pads. I, I'm very heavy on my brakes, so every race we were changing fluids and stuff like that because I think I was starting to boil them up most races. Um, but parts-wise, I think we changed a crank sensor through the year at Bishop's Court. We had an issue where I thought I was running out of fuel, the car seemed to be misfiring through the race and it was mad because it was the first time I'd let a race and I remember thinking as I was sitting in first, I was thinking I'm running out of fuel, I'm running out of fuel so I was trying to manage it and shift early, lift and I was, yeah. cause I was adamant, oh I must be running out of fuel, it was so funny so I was, and then when I came back in, I made it to the end, when I came back in I said to the boys, I think it's, I think it's empty on fuel and they drained it out in about seven litres coming out, <laughs> so I was like what? <laughs> but it ended up, it was the crank sensor and from taking curbs and stuff like that, it oh, seems yeah. to make it misfire. So that was changed through the year, um, relatively cheap part. And I think at the start of the year, we had some issues with the steering wheel on the car, and we changed again, just some little electrical push connections. Yeah. Nothing mad, like, so to be fair, the car has been, in my opinion, ultra reliable through the season. Like, the, how you have to take it half to the car, it's been yeah. a beast. Um, and you, you mentioned Fergus Vardy there, and of course, Fergus brought a load of cars into Ireland in his time, mostly I think all, all Formula 3 cars. Yeah. I think, I, he may have had the Formula Renault to start, but again, a, a great competitor yeah. has been out for years and years driving in what was Formula Libra yeah, and changed okay. to Formula Boss. So it's nice to give these lads a mention that yeah. you know, Absolutely. the recognition that they were yeah. some of the instigators of this series. Yeah, well, when you look, I mean, Fergus has bought, Fergus um, used to own Mick Roach's car. That's right. You know, so you do look and think, yeah, there's, there's a fair few. And I think Fergus bought another F3 this year, but I don't think he's stuck with it. So I'm sure he'll be back out. And you said there how competitive mm-hmm. Mick Roach is in that older car as well. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. If you look Mick Roach's times for what, what we all describe as an older F3, you got to take it off to Mick. He pumps in unbelievable times. He does, for, in fairness. Uh, yeah, he does, yeah. I like racing with Mick. He's not afraid to get his elbows. He's, yeah. right, so. <laughs> he's a hard man. A lot, of people know, a lot of people know that. <laughs> Tom, you, you had a, a World Series. Well, series. Renault, I think it's yeah, called. Renault, yeah. well, tell us about that um, T05, 2005 World Series, uh, Renault V6, 3.5 litre, 450, 470 horsepower, that sort of power. Lovely car, good car. Um, yeah. We had a few glitches with it originally. Um, I think it was probably storage issues. I think the ECU got damp and was throwing up odd issues that no one like Joe Power couldn't find on the mapping and that. So it was resolved once the ECU was uh, replaced. Yeah. It come good, good reliable car. Um, Super sounding car that. Yeah, that yeah. That V6 engine so Absolutely. I mean, in fairness, the amount of marshals or people in the pits have come up and say, what a noise, like, you know yeah. what I mean? Superb, like, you know, I suppose sitting in it, you don't get to enjoy that as much. Um, well, particularly for us lads of our vintage who like the sound of racing cars. Absolutely. And I'm sure lots of young lads yeah. as well. Yeah. But it's great to be able to hear them in yeah. your local track, Mondello or Bishop's Court or Kirkiston. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's lovely to see, I mean, in the, in the Boss series, it's lovely to see some of the older cars out there and performing, um, like, you know, the like of your car, um, great to hear, see out there, and being competitive as a big car like in the Boss One, um, and it's hopefully we'll still keep seeing them older cars yeah. coming out and not just hidden away and and see them being used exactly. for what they're meant to be. You know? Exactly. So. Tony, 
your car this year. Yeah. Tell us about it. Well, whenever I first started, so I, I, I had got the, the radical, and uh, I remember I was watching, keeping a close eye on the results and stuff, and, and as soon the penny dropped, it, I realised that I would need a single seater, you know, if it was going to win anything. Exactly. And I remember uh, talking to this man here in the garage, and uh, <laughs> me and him come up the, with a kind of a deal, anyhow, and bought the car, actually, that <laughs> Orn was doing so well, and yeah. so it was much to the dismay of Orn. Like, uh, it's the only way to slow him yeah, down. Yeah. <laughs> but again, uh, unbelievable week you are. Um, going round the bends, just on the rail, late on the brakes, everything. Like I think it was about um, two seconds faster straight away than it would have been in the Radical. And the Radical wasn't slow either, like, yeah. you know. Um, Were you quicker than Aaron in the car? <laughs> ah. Very, very similar times. There was, like, yeah, there was, there was nothing, there was nothing okay. between us. So there wasn't like... So it wasn't just Aaron, it was the car as well. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've had many great battles over, over the year, like it's just been unbelievable, like two near identical cures, like, yeah. you know. Yeah. Mm. And then uh, obviously it changed it there recently to the, the Mercedes now, and uh, it seems to be a bit, a bit quicker again. Like It does, so right. is, yeah. yeah. But it's a nice lovely car, that. <laughs> lovely car. It's, it's, a, it's a good machine, yeah. Now tell us about your, you know, continue on with another question, yep. your, your actual race year. The, over the year, you know, what were the highlights or um, things that went wrong that o- over you were the, unhappy with? Uh, I think whenever I got the Mercedes, I could feel that, that you know, there was a, a better car, faster car, and I, I remember being out in front, uh, I think it was like about, I don't know what, the, the lead I had was about 15 seconds, and the, I remember then the race car coming out, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was the safety car coming out, and it was a, a restart race, and then it started raining, and I think, uh, who won that race was... Yeah, the Mac radical Connolly. Mick Connolly, yeah, yeah. for a play of the Mick. Oh, yeah. Connolly, so yeah. I felt very done yeah. out, done out of it that race. <laughs> yeah, I still haven't won a race yet. <laughs> <laughs> but you were on for winning that race. Obviously, you were going to walk that race. Yeah, uh, and then was he? Uh, was he here or did he really? Oh, no, he was going to like when the when the red flag came out. I laughed because <laughs> I sat to myself thinking, Tony's sitting there free now because I was there at that stage yeah. earlier in the year when yeah. I had a red flag and I knew Tony's going to be freaked and I was like, I look, <laughs> I have a good chance here. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, was funny. Ma- but, uh, the, 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 the start that Michael, Mike Connolly got was just unbelievable. unbelievable He's yeah. just left mm-hmm. us sitting off the line. Right tyres for the right conditions. Right tyres, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I was in dry medium, so I remember that, yeah. Now, Michael Connolly and the, putting a, you know, oh, another yeah. mention on yeah. another yeah, guy. Yeah, another great driver, yeah. Us, another great driver. lovely guy. Very competitive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Probably in the wrong car for trying to win the class. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah. he has plans for the future. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, um, but there was one occasion I remember seeing Tony and he was sitting on the pit wall and his head was in his hands. <laughs> I said, what's wrong with you, Tony? He slowed down. Yeah, he slowed down, yeah. Uh, Why was that, Tony? I don't know. I remember I was chasing down Sylvie, so I was, and I remember looking up at the, at the time thing on the board and it, it had said one minute and I had it in my head that this was the last lap. <laughs> yeah. So I remember then um, coming out of the top corner, Duckham's corner, is that what you call it there? Uh, well, Dunlap. The Dunlap, Dunlap, Dunlap corner. Well, right? it's, and uh, I had uh, I'd actually just got past Sylvie and um, I remember coming up to the start line and Sylvie had just passed me on the line. And I said to myself, that's, that's a photo finish. Like, yeah. uh, I backed off the par. And then he come flat out round me, round the other side. <laughs> yeah. And I said, what is going on here? You know? And I put the boot down. He, he was gone. <laughs> oh, but sure, these things I happen. can appreciate then yeah, where you had your, so your hands in your I'll, head. I'll, you know? I'll, never, I'll never do that again. Never. Yeah. <laughs> Tony's in lap will be flat yeah. out next season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every one of them. <laughs> Tom, what are your memories of the season? Uh, this season just gone, um, highs and lows, in fairness, uh, I think the first two rounds, not four races, didn't have a finish, was painful. Yep. Very painful. I'd say. Very painful, um, as far as I'm going on that one. Uh, I wanted to burn the car at that stage. Um, yeah. Because, you know, it was just such an intermittent fault. And then after that, uh, it, you know, it was to get the car running right and bring it home each race. Um, good crack, good fun, a great car. Um, enjoyed everything, enjoyed having some good tussles with Eamon. Uh, I think Eamon's, you know, 
great fun to get out on track with and uh, he pushes on like he's a you know, yeah, good yeah. competitor. And when you mention Eamon, because I, I like you bringing in the names, you mm. know, the, for the viewers, we're talking about Eamon Madison here. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And yeah. Eamon, you know, considering what problems, medical problems he had this mm. year with breaking a hip or yeah. whatever, and he's out, yeah. you know, he's out in the walking stick and he's barely able to get into the car, but he still gets into it. Yeah. Yep. And he I drives. Mean, it I is mean, an unbelievable competitor. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. I went out of my way to get his hip broken. I think next year I'm going to have to break his knee. <laughs> Stop yeah. him getting yeah. in the car. But you've got to take your hat yeah. off to him. Um, I, he's turned me on to Red Bull. I don't know. Yeah. How, <laughs> how man what about the fags or the. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I don't know about the fags, but we'll try Red Bull next season if that doesn't work. Yeah. And Tom, while you're, while you're on this, I have, I have made a note here about uh, the halfway point during the season which is June uh, in the championship you were fifth yeah in the, in your class mm. fifth in boss one yeah and you, you had 26 points mm. to Johnny Files yeah who had 91 yeah. points absolutely you know did you think you had any chance of winning <clears throat> the class I knew, well, in fairness to Jonathan Folds, I think uh, reliability, Jonathan should be sitting here, not me, in fairness. Um, I think reliability paid an immense amount to that. It does. If, if you look at the first half of the season, like I just said there a minute ago, first four races, no points. So I knew I've got two to drop, and I dropped all my points. If you look at Jonathan's, all of his, he'd still got points to drop. And I think where, like, you know, so at the end of the season, I'd got four rounds that I'd, or four races that I'd lost from that first part of the season. Um, so I knew it'd start catching up from sprinting in the past where people would think you've never got a chance and you'd have your drop rounds. So once it starts to come to tally up for the end of the year, um, you knew you'd be there. You keep going, you confident. keep finishing. Yeah, Nick, absolutely. You know, in fairness, I was only getting used to the World Series, first year driving it, so all I wanted was consistency and finishes. And after the first four races or attempted races where the uh, car let me down, it was critical to just get points, get points, get points. Yeah. And that paid for itself. And uh, I'm sure if Jonathan looked back at this season, I think he drove a great car well, um, but if he'd got reliability, mm -hmm. as I say, he deserves to be seen. Oh yeah, he'd be he'd, he'd be one to watch if he, oh, if he can back. get that car yeah. to the finish. <clears throat> Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. super. But when I mean, driving. championships are all about finishing mm. as well. Absolutely, reliability. Yeah. Now, um, Tony, I have a note for you about the halfway point, which was in June, in the championship. You were third out of uh, I don't know how many drivers are in that class, but. You were trailing Mitch, Mick Roach in second by only three points, but you were trailing Aaron by 25. Yeah. But, you know, did you think you were going, you could had a possibility of winning the championship? I'm not, don't think, uh, I didn't think I was going to win at that stage. No, probably not, no. I knew, I knew, that I knew it was probably going to be between me and Aaron and Mick for the top three, but uh, I think I was set in the sights to be finishing second probably in, in the class yeah. at that stage probably, yeah. Okay. I knew, I knew that it needed something seriously to happen to Aaron's car or something like that there, you know, to be getting the, the, the catching him there. Yeah, but you're, I suppose by the, <laughs> the way most motorsport Ireland events uh, operate with the awards, that the overall guy gets the overall award yeah. and then he's popped out of the class. So you step in there yeah. as being the next guy up and you end up with the first in class trophy yeah. for the under two litre cars, mm -hmm. which I suppose you'll take. I'll take that surely, yeah, definitely, yeah. 100%, yeah. yeah. Now, Aaron, did I, yeah, I have something for you as well. I'm from June again yeah. in the Champions. You were equal with Johnny Files. Yeah, yeah. At and that stage. Tony was in third, 22 yeah. points behind. Yeah. So, you know, did you think? At that stage, I genuinely, I remember it, because I remember sitting thinking to myself, we were going, I think, for a round in Mondello, then Kirkus down, and then back to Mondello. And me and Johnny were like joint on points, or within a point of each other. 
And I remember thinking to myself, I need to beat Johnny in Mondello because he's going to beat me in Kirkus now because he's got more power. Yeah. So I remember coming into Mondello halfway through the year thinking, oh, I've got to beat Johnny this weekend. And I'll never forget, I think I won the two races that weekend and Johnny was actually out. I think he'd had mechanical issues. So come the end of that weekend going to Kyrgyz down, I wasn't really under as much pressure then because I'd had a little buffer. Do you get me? Okay. So, but, but, but I remember the midpoint sitting thinking, oh, I have to beat Johnny because if I don't beat Johnny and he beats me in Mondello and beats me in Kyrgyz down, he'll be too far ahead. So coming in, that was a big round for me that weekend. Coming in, I was saying to myself, I've got to perform here and got to beat Johnny. So if I beat him this weekend and he beats me at Kirkus Town, we're still coming back to Mondello fairly even. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as I said, Johnny had mechanical issues that weekend. I'm sure it was that weekend. And um, that's when I think Tony really started to start <laughs> hunting me down. <laughs> my yeah, my yeah, focus yeah. shifted, say, from Johnny and me battling to you know, now me and Tony are going yeah. at it for the year. <laughs> so. Exactly. And by your end, uh, Aaron, you had 199 overall points, um, 31 points ahead of Tony, a sizable amount. Uh, in second, so a comfortable victory for you, overall victory in the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. to be fair, in the end, I didn't really, my dad and me were chatting and he'd say to me coming up to the, to the track, me, the time would say to me, how many points are you ahead? Like, and I'd be like, I don't know. And he'd be like, you must know, there's no way you don't know. And I didn't really sit and <laughs> yeah, count the points exactly. He's a liar, he says that No, I didn't, I didn't sit and count them exactly. I just, it's like I said to ICCR, I kind of sat back and thought, right, if Tony finishes second and third today, I need to finish second and third in the opposite races. So I just kind of went into a mode of saying to myself, I just need to match my closest competitor and just go out and instead of putting pressure on myself, go out and try and win or go out and try and be in the top two or top three, I'm more focused on just me and Tony and where Tony finished if Tony finished second in the first race I knew I need to push for second in the second race you know so yeah. that was the way I kind of went about the rest of the season really in my head um, okay. and then coming into the last weekend I knew I had a good gap and knew I just needed a, a good finish so um but you were under a bit of pressure coming in there. Well, to be fair, we were everyone was chatting in the team. Me, I was chatting to me saying like, just drive around and finish. Well, I'm more of a bull. I yeah, get in and just want you to push, push, push. push. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. It's to fairness, like the key thing was it. He had to get the finishes. It yeah. didn't have to be P1, P2. It yeah. just had to be. And so, trying to tell him and educate no. him yeah, yeah. to bring a car home doesn't work. Yeah, but red rag to a ball. Yeah, but he's competitive. You see. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. He doesn't yeah. just drive around. Yeah, obviously. No. Well, the last I did qualifying, I remember you saying to me pushing qualifying. So I thought, yeah, we'll put it. And then in the race, I was pushing behind Tony. I was sitting behind Tony and. I can't really remember, it was Mick, Sylvie, Tony, me. And I remember yeah. sitting thinking, oh, you never know what could happen in front of you. So yeah. it was a mad little race. And then the last three laps, I sat and thought to myself, geez, this is anybody's, because Mick had pulled away and then we started to pull Mick back. And I thought to myself, anything yeah. could happen here. Mick so. and Sylvie's tires had gone off at that yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah. It was they an were, interesting, they were all that was a yeah. real interesting race, because I was more kind of, not sitting back, chilling, but I was sitting back saying, don't get into a, you know, a fight you don't need to. So there's no point really trying to, you know, I was moving around behind Tony, trying to tell yeah. him like, "Oh, I'm here," you know. But yeah. I did. I'm not going to throw anything up his inside like a mad do, do you think Sylvie Mullins had the quickest car out there? Uh, I think Sylvie's car, once it gets ahead of you, is the quickest car because he Sylvie's very good. Like he's very fast in the straights. And if you look for an example where everyone watches, or when I watch back the <coughs> footage, people say like, "Oh, here's the areas where the F3s are quick," and they're right. Coming into turn three, we can carry an immense amount yeah. of speed. But you know, unless you have you know the magic wand then you can make Sylvie disappear you ain't getting by him like Sylvie's race is 20 years he's got very good defense he puts the car in great places and my favorite place to attack somebody was through the S-Men's heading for Dunlop or Southside Motor yeah. Factors and I found Sylvie probably compared to last year I found last year you could attack Sylvie in an F3 car there through the S-Men's and I found this year Sylvie was only out really for the last race and I only really got a go with him, but I found through the s bends he was savage fast. Like where my car, I could really get a good exit to try get up the inside. Yeah. Sylvie was very brave in my opinion. He was getting the power on early in the s bends <clears throat> to maintain that drive you were getting out of the corner. And it's like I say, I think I was saying, I don't know who I was chatting to, but I was chatting to somebody and saying like, your best chance was at Dunlop. 
and what's the point in Overtaken yeah, yeah, Sylvia Dunlap like he passed you, you know, straight again Tony did it in America and he just goes by again yeah, so yeah, yeah. You, know, you have to get Sylvie done either in Tour and Three or the entry to the s Bends to then have the gap to pull and I look and think in an F3 once they get ahead of you you know, you need them to miss a gear, you need a mistake, like you've got to get up the back of somebody and really hassle them and pressure them. Um, but of yeah, course, like, Sylvie, Sylvie won a race or two, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, I think, I can't, I know Sylvie won the last race of the year, because the did? two of us were going at it, I think it was me and Sylvie at the end going, it was, I know Sylvie won the last race, I don't know who won, I think Mick won the second last race, if I remember right, but yeah, yeah no, yeah, Sylvie, approach, but Sylvie was, oh, the last race I enjoyed with him, we had a good battle, but his, his defence and his, his placement of the car was very good, it was yeah. clever, he was smart, he knew, you know, he could leave a door at Dunlop and he'd have the power to get me on the straight, so it's a tough one to know what the best car to have like big power or an F3 like I think it all depends on what suits you like I like fast corner speed late braking so I like the F3s but if you like you know if you don't like to corner and, and brake as late and you can have five six hundred horsepower six fifty horsepower to give you more of a shove yeah. happy days yeah. so it's a tough one it yeah. is a tough one and it swings and roundabouts really just to mention that the reason that you three boys are here is not because I like you or anything, but I do. <laughs> but that Tom was the winner of Boss One, yeah. which is the over two Thank litre you. cars. Tony was the winner of Boss Two, which is the under two litre cars. And Aaron won the overall championship. And that's why you three were picked. But to get back to the um, what we're doing here. Um, what about the expense, Tony? What about the expense of running a car like yours? Um, <clears throat> The initial buying it, uh, buying it at the start is quite expensive, but uh, the F3s are just they're super reliable. Um, yeah. Even the, the car that I bought off these guys, like, I, I ran it all year and I don't think it need brake pads, brake discs, just the, just the basics really. Like, Stuff you'd have to put yeah. in a road car if you were driving yeah. it every day. Tires, yeah. tires mm -hmm. and fuel, and just that's, that's really it. Like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you, you had one mechanic with you. One uh, one paddy was it paddy yeah. yeah yeah but even still like we 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 never adjusted that car all year so we didn't like we we yeah. don't have the luxury of the race team or anything like that. But you had Hugh Lloyd over with I, you then. I did have, I, I gave you a great sound. <laughs> <laughs> I did have fuel over, yes, whenever I bought the, whenever I bought the Mercedes, he came over to just make sure that everything's right. But no, that, that, that was in the price of the car. Mm. Hugh Lloyd, for the listeners or the viewers, yeah. who, who, who's Hugh Lloyd? Uh, Hugh owns CF Racing. In, in Wales, I think he, I think he actually has. Does he have the lap record of Mandela, or he, he was previous uh, Lancaster Trophy winner? Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely. He's yeah. a great guy. Like, so, so I, great I know guy to have on your side. Like, yeah, I know that he ran. He ran a team of yeah. cars, Formula yeah. Three cars in the in yeah. the in the UK. Yeah, they won and the championship. A, I think a this super year. driver himself. Like, yeah, super yeah. driver himself. Yeah. He he was over about five years ago, I think. Yeah, and he drove in the wet and uh, he blew everybody away. Walked yeah. away. Walked away from everybody. Yeah, but his car prep was obviously yeah, unbelievable. One like, percent, even, and even that you know, buying a, buying a car off a guy like that. Yeah, you, you know, know you, you know what you're buying. You know, you know, you know what you're buying there. Yeah, yeah. And Tom, you know, you had Stone Motorsport <coughs> yeah. running your cars. Yeah. Well, in, in fairness, go back to because look, I look after Aaron's car financially. F3 cars, Delara F3 cars are untouchable in my view, mm -hmm. in the way of. Brilliant cars for the technical layout of Mondello, um, but the reliability. I mean, if you look at Aaron's, uh, uh, not follow Tony all year, but if you look at Aaron, he had one DNF, which is where he was tagged. That car, this year's car, has been 100% reliable, mm -hmm. absolutely perfect. Your old car yep. was 100% reliable. Yeah. Um, you, you can't knock that. The World Series should have been, should have been. A, uh, an easy run. Um, I just say I'll put it totally down to probably a bit of dampness. Got in the car over winter, um, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, that's a reliable car as well, but does probably need more fettling than an F3. Uh, they, had, had, had the uh, World Series car got a Magneti Morelli uh, ECU in it? No, 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 it's no, 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 no. Life ECU. And in oh, fairness, yeah. we shipped the ECU back to life. They looked at it and said, it's a ECU, it's not another component. In fairness, Joe Power was very good. He'd been into it and couldn't see why the car was shutting into limpo mode. Couldn't find any fault 
that was saying, put it in limbo, and then uh, life just said, yeah, bang the new ECU on it. Touch wood. Thing. Okay. Bang. Very good. Yeah. So, what about plans for 23? Have, have you decided what you're doing yet? Well, hopefully I'll be, I'll be running the mark anyhow. Uh, looking forward to having a full season in that car. Yeah. Okay. Would, yeah. 100%. What about it? Uh, World Series is sold. Uh, deposit on it. It is going to run in America. Uh, it's been bought by a race team, come over and uh, viewed it and are taking it to America. Um, we were probably going to prep the Lola as a spare car, that 9150, uh, that was sold this morning. <laughs> you uh, are so, you sure you're not in the car sales business? No, no, no. Well, in fairness, we put all three cars up for sale at the end of the season just to see what interest there was out there. So um, we're looking at a couple of cars at the minute. Okay. Um, but that's all I want to say at the minute. All right. Yeah. <laughs> You're keeping your cards close yeah, to your chest, and, yeah, yeah. and what about what about Aaron? I mean, oh, I'm very much led by Tom. For example, when you can't afford a wheel, the yeah. wheel like. <laughs> <laughs> so, so do you keep looking at Tom? But what's going on? Oh, look, I send him Formula oh. One cards. I send <laughs> him everything. Yeah. You know, I'd like do you know this. When, I think this would be do great. You know when you lay in bed at night and it's about eleven o'clock and you're thinking yeah. of snoozing up and giving your wife a kiss and you just hear <laughs> ping, ping, ping. <laughs> Yeah. And you look at your phone and think someone must have a water leak. I'm getting a call out. Uh, right? And you look at your phone and it's look at this race car, Dad. Look at this yeah. race car, Dad. <laughs> so, uh, no, in fairness, Aaron does spend a fair bit of time hunting stuff down. Um, as I say, we're actively pursuing two cars at the minute. Um, but uh, the decision will be made at Christmas. Okay. Um, we have bought one car that's not going to run in. It's not going to be in Boss, it's a tin top. It may be just sprinted in the UK, it may run over here, I don't know. It might be just one we take over and do some double drive sprints. Okay. I don't know yet. But So Christmas the decision will be made, see what's turned up. Okay. So, here's the final question. What, what developments would you like to see in Boss? I mean, presumably if you're, if you're competing next year, what would, you, would you like to see any changes? Would you... Have you any ideas? Yeah, I mean, in pers personally, I think it's a, a very well-run series. Um, I'm a bit biased. I'd prefer us to see us go into Anglesey or Knock Hill and just spreading it out a bit more um, just for different layout of tracks. I certainly, if the whole, and I'm not being derogatory to Mondello, but if every race was going to be in Mondello, then, you know, it, it would probably impact whether I run or not. Okay. Um, I do think, you know, we've got such a driver skill layout of the boys here, the Silvies, you know, all these lads, like get them big cars and the F3 cars out to places like Anglesey, stretch their legs, probably bring a couple of UK guys that are not competing at the minute into the series. And, and if it attracts more people in, great. But that, that's my Well, in, dream. in this year, 22, we had seven weekends, 14, 14 championship rounds mm. in three circuits. Mm. Mondello, we had five. Uh, 10 rounds, yep. five days in Mondello. Mm. We had one in Bishop's Court, mm. and unfortunately, Bishop's Court is no longer available to us, which is, you know, mighty displeasing to most of us, I think. Yeah, I mean, in fairness, uh, uh, apart from Boss, what's annoying about that is myself and Aaron were asked to do a charity display up there, and we took two Boss cars up for Northern Ireland Air Ambulance and mm. done some runs where there's mm. just the two of us out. And I must admit, it was the busiest part of the day. And to see, I would say at one stage, 50 kids queuing to sit in Aaron's car and 50 kids queuing to jump in the World Series was a fantastic event. And how, and Bishop's Court was a fantastic track, mm. good layout, good fast track, nice track. Uh, you know, it's disappointing it is. as a driver for it not to be on the calendar. Yeah, I think every everybody driving the bus that mm. that has been there mm. would want to go there again. Absolutely, but it's very unfortunate that we're mm. not going yeah. there, and it's out of our yeah. control, oh, yeah. unfortunately. And Kirkston, of course, there, you know, they're, you know, they look after us well. Mm. 
you know, they, they give us the garages, they hump fellas yeah. out of the garages who are normally in them, so, you know, Richard Young and his crew up there are... They do a great and, job. And Donny, is Donald, Donald O'Neill. O'Neill, mm. yeah. Also, you know, facilitated us. So, mm. you know, we're very happy going there. And I think, uh, obviously in 23, we will be there. We probably will have five rounds in uh, Kirkiston, or sorry, in, in Mondello. And we do plan to go to Anglesey. We have uh, we put the question there and asked them, you know, can they fit us in on a date, probably in May, which was the old Bishop's Court date. Mm. So, you know, mm. we're hopeful we will get there. So, Tony, is there anything you'd like to see changed or, you know, no. the organisation, so, so the no. way it's done? No, uh, no, it would be good just to see uh, uh, a few more drivers. So, uh, yeah, that's yeah, well, we're doing our best because um, on that on that subject, we have uh, we intend to change the class structure rather yeah. than just have boss one and boss two mm -hmm. over two liter, two liter and under. We ha plan to have a sixteen hundred cc under a sixteen hundred and under class because there are a couple of cars out there who intend to run and to give them something to go for. These are Hayabusa engine single seaters, yep. basically motorcycle engine single seaters. So um, to give them something to go yep. for, basically, and then we hope to also have a split of the under two liter cars at a, a year split of 2009 to allow the older F3s, Formula Renaults, to be with a chance of of gaining championship points yep. on their own, basically rather than the you know the cars you boys drive yeah which are big money cars mm -hmm. so um yeah that's our plan well, big money to buy but uh, from what i see you always you always near get what you paid for them yeah mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. not lo really lose much on yeah them. if you can afford the outlay super the initial outlay it'll come back to I, you. I definitely would recommend buying a f3 Okay. Secure, yeah. yeah, we've done well on yep. three or four we've owned. Um, I mean, if I was going out tomorrow to buy, I'm probably a bit wider than Aaron, but that guy you've got now is great size. Like, you can't yep. beat an F3, and they do hold their value strongly, yep. you know. Yeah. It seems to be the longer in the race, the longer the race is, mm. the more they come alive, mm. the faster they get, and like, you know, yeah, they just yeah. they'd, yeah. They'd run all day. Yeah. Well, <laughs> listen, I appreciate you coming here today, travelling from you know, loud and up from the north, or yeah. down from the north, should I say. No problem. So appreciate you coming here and, you know, Thanks. giving us your stories. And I hope the listeners enjoyed the bit of a chat we had here today as well. Absolutely. So um, hopefully we'll talk to you soon and you will be out for 2023. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Defend Thanks for having us. Defend <laughs> 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 <laughs>